This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be comparing two brand new cameras, the Sony a6400, it's this one, and the Canon EOS RP. It's very cold out here. We're going to do our best. We're going to take a look at a lot of different things and see which one is right for you for your filmmaking needs. Now, you may be saying, well, the price points are a little bit different. This is a full frame. The Sony is an APS-C. But if you're a filmmaker, you're shooting 4K on the Canon. It does have a 1.6 times crop compared to the 1.5 crop with uh, the a6400 compared to full frame so they're very similar um, the canon is $1300 the sony is $900 but the canon right now if you're buying it they're going to throw in a grip for you they're going to give you an adapter so i think this is a pretty fair comparison they're close enough to be able to compare Let's start off by talking about the exteriors, the bodies, the ergonomics. And in this category, I definitely have to hand it to Canon. Just holding these in the hand, the Canon's grip feels much better. I like the dials that they have, uh, that we have two dials right here instead of just one. And we have a couple other additions such as a headphone jack um, and along with the mic jack, whereas the A6400 only has a microphone jack. Now they both do have screens that can flip out so you can kind of see yourself. Uh, the Canon goes for the traditional route where you can flip it out this way. Um, I like this better for vlogging. That way you can still put a mic on top and you're not going to block the screen. But for photography, I do prefer uh, this style that the Sony has because you can just keep it compact. You can tilt it up. You can tilt it down and uh, if you're doing that you don't have to tilt it out first and then kind of the horizon is off when you do it this way but one benefit of the canon is that you can flip it and close it um, that way if you're going to put it in your bag it's not going to get scratched up just gives it a little bit more protection now with the a6400 it does flip up if you want to vlog or take selfie photos that does pose a problem if you want to put a microphone on here but small rig uh, has a adapter that plugs into the cold shoe sticks it out here on the side it doesn't block the flash it's very slim so that's going to be a great solution if you want to vlog with the a6400 i'll leave a link in the video description as far as ease of use i also have to hand it to canon they've been making cameras for a long time and the learning curve is definitely much lower with the eos rp the menus are easy to figure out and understand. Their picture profiles actually have names so you can understand what they are instead of just picture profile 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Sony gives you a ton of features, options, and customizations, but it does take a lot longer to figure out the menus. Some things are in weird places, but now with the My Menu, you can kind of pin some things, and that does help. The touchscreen can't be used in the menus, but one standout feature with the A6400 is the unlimited record time, so you no longer have to stop at 30 minutes. So let's start out with our first test, and that's dynamic range. We have the sun. Usually most of our days are overcast, so that is perfect. I'm going to have Vadim stand in the shade. It's going to be a very difficult situation, and for the first test, I'm just going to use the standard picture profiles. Uh, just like if you don't know how to tweak the settings, you grab it and go, and then we'll take a look at a couple other options. These are the profiles out of the box. The white balance is identical, and they're exposed with the exact same settings. Of course, the Canon has a lot more contrast, but we have a smoother highlight roll off than the Sony. After a quick exposure adjustment, they look fairly similar. Uh, we have a lot more noise in the Canon shadows, but I'm surprised by how much we could pull those up and how much of that shadow detail wasn't crushed. The highlight roll off is now smoother on the Sony when we pull that down. We have a little bit more uh, highlight detail that was retained. Here we have my custom picture profile 6 from the Sony. It's just a little bit of contrast and saturation added in camera. We're not blowing out any highlights this time. All that's protected, but our mids are a little bit darker. Uh, the Canon, obviously, you guys see there's a lot of contrast, which you could remove inside the camera. Uh, but we also are blowing out a lot of the highlights. Now, with a simple exposure correction, uh, here we see the colors actually match up fairly well. I do prefer the highlight roll off on the face of Vadim. And with the Sony this time, we're kind of balancing how much contrast versus how much highlight detail we have. Sony does promise up to 14 stops of dynamic range on their cameras, including the A6400. And that is because it has its full suite of profiles, including S-Log2, S-Log3, and Hybrid Log Gamma. Now with the EOS RP, you just have standard picture profiles. We don't have C-Log like we do in the EOS R. So that is definitely a bummer, but they do include an HDR mode, which I will show you guys. But unfortunately, that requires you to shoot in 1080p and have fully automatic settings. So you can no longer control your settings yourself. It's going to do all of that for you. 
Now we have the HDR mode on the Canon, which forces you to shoot 1080p with auto exposure, and it looks terrible. We have S-Log2 on the Sony, not S-Log3, which will give more dynamic range, but S-Log2 will maintain your image without uh, putting in a bunch of banding and stuff like that, which is my preference. Once we color correct both, I really wasn't able to pull much back from the Canon's highlights, uh, and the image does not look good. Uh, with S-Log, we have a bunch of detail in the, the highlights. We have have a good amount of contrast in the mids and we still have good shadow detail you definitely have more dynamic range with the log options on the sony and the eos r does not give you any log profiles one thing i have to mention is that it's much easier to expose your shots with the sony cameras that's because we have zebra stripes that you can customize we have different metering modes and spot metering so you can actually just set the spot on your subject and see what the exposure is like it works really well and it's easy whereas with the eos rp you do have a histogram and that is it so it does definitely make it difficult to get a perfect exposure with this camera i've built five websites using squarespace and have been recommending them for for over four years now, so when they reached out and wanted to sponsor the channel, it was a no-brainer. Whether you're wanting to build a portfolio site, e-commerce, blog, or anything else, they've got you covered. They have an easy-to-use website builder and great templates with automatic versions for mobile devices. Follow the link in the description to start your free trial with no credit card required, and then you can get 10% off your first purchase. Now both these cameras do have some pretty bad rolling shutter. Um, the A6500 uh, downsamples 6K, so it reads out the whole center down to 4K, and that's why it has rolling shutter issues. Uh, the Canon EOS RP and the R, I'm not sure why, because it's a one-to-one -one pixel readout, so it's not as much data that it's taking in. But let's, um, I'm gonna hold these kind of on top of each other, match up the focal lengths, and we'll see which one is actually worse. A quick warning, this might make you feel sick, but comparing both as far as rolling shutter, I'm surprised that they look really, really close. A lot of people are saying bad things about the EOS R and its rolling shutter, but of course the A6300, 400, 500, they have bad rolling shutter too. Uh, so when we stop this clip and we overlay it, you could see that the rolling shutter is basically exactly the same. So with both these cameras, you want to be careful when you're hand holding and you want to avoid panning quickly. So now let's test out video autofocus. Both Sony and Canon do a great job in continuous autofocus. The tech is a little bit different, but they both have face detection. And now the A6400, you can also uh, touch and track a subject with the touch screen. Uh, there is one downside with the Canon though, compared to some other options. And that's if you're shooting in 4K, it only uses contrast detection. Now this is a really good scene for contrast detection because we have a lot of sunlight hitting, a lot of contrast. So we'll see how much does that actually affect the video autofocus focusing compared to the Sony. Now I do have a third party Tamron lens on here just because I have to zoom in to match uh, the crop factors when you're going to the 4K and the different one for 1080p, but I don't think that should be a big hindrance to the Sony. Starting off with 1080p where we have the dual pixel on the Canon, both cameras are doing a great job tracking Vadim's face. The Canon is a little bit smoother if you pay attention to the details in the background as it's shifting, uh, but they're both keeping up and if you look at the subject it looks basically the same. As Vadim dips, both of them shift smoothly to the background, and when Vadim stands up, the Sony was a little bit faster, but both of them were really smooth. And now in 4K, the Canon hunted a little bit, first focused to the front and then to the back, and then when Vadim stands up, the Sony catches on, and once again, the Canon hunts uh, before it's able to find his face. We repeat it again just to make sure, and you can see the results are exactly the same, so that wasn't an anomaly, it's just the contrast detection autofocus system doing its thing. Walking backwards, the Sony is perfectly spot on where the Canon is completely out of focus this whole sequence and hunting back and forth. And even at this point, it still didn't find his face, even though the face tracking was around his face, the autofocus system didn't keep up. And here, Vadim was perfectly in focus where the Canon actually locked for a split second and then front focused and stayed that way. Walking backwards again, you could see that we're getting basically the same result. Vadim's out of focus. With running, the Canon actually reacted slightly faster. Uh, it caught on his face but then lost it. Now it's kind of hunting back and forth where the Sony's locked on the whole time. And we're not in the middle of focusing distance. The Canon just decided to stay front focused at this point until almost the end where it changed. 
All right guys, so we're here on the roof and now we are gonna compare the 1080p and the 4K quality. Now in 1080p, uh, this Canon is using the full frame. So I'm gonna have to use the 35 mil and then the Sigma 18 to 35 on here. And it is gonna be skipping data just like the Sony, but in 4K, it does crop in one to one. And then we have a similar sensor size. And for that test, I'm gonna be using the Sigma 18 to 35 on both cameras to make sure it's completely fair. I'm starting out with a regular still image just to show you how close these two actually are as far as the maximum resolution they can capture. They're both very close and if you crop in quite a bit you'll actually see that the Canon is just very slightly more detailed. It makes sense because the sensor's a little bit higher resolution but when you look at video when there's a lot more processing involved that's where we'll start to see the differences. Now jumping into 1080p you can instantly see all of the detail that we're losing compared to those still images but looking at these wide on my 5k monitor I can already tell that we have a little bit more detail with the Canon and then punching in that just kind of verifies that not only do we have a little bit more detail on the Canon but also less noise maybe because of the full frame sensor but in the deep shadows it's a little cleaner now we're looking at 1080p at 60 the images look very similar to how they looked like before punching in we basically get the same result as before slightly less aliasing slightly less noise and slightly more detail but on your screen you may not be able to tell unless it's a 4 or 5k now looking at 4K, we're using the same exact lens here. The Sony immediately looks more detailed, looks more sharp. Punching into 1080p here, we can definitely see the difference where the Canon looks uh, almost like 1440p with more kind of noise and artifacting in the shadows. So with the Sony, if you're going to be cropping in and using one 4K feed, it definitely is much better and resolves a lot more detail and with less noise at the same time. Now one frame rate that I couldn't compare is 120 frames per second because the Canon can't shoot 120 even at 720p. You're limited to 60 frames per second. Whereas the a6400 can shoot 120 frames per second in 1080p with full autofocus and with audio. That's incredible for $900. So all of this footage you're seeing here is from my full detailed review of the a6400, which you can check out by using the little box at the end of this video. All right guys, so now let's compare the low light. We're gonna take a look at both 1080p where the Canon RP has an advantage because it's using the full frame sensor and also in 4K where the crop factors are about equal. Starting off at 1600, both of these images look good and usable. The Canon has a little bit more detail here in 1080p and keep in mind the Canon is using a full frame sensor. We have slightly more noise in the shadows, especially in the red area that Canon is known for. Bumping up to 3200, once again I'm seeing a little bit more noise in the Canon where the Sony does a little bit more denoising. I'm seeing a little bit of artifacting as far as denoising and then being compressed, but both are definitely still usable. Now at 6400 ISO, this is where I would not want to use the Canon. We see a lot of noise in the shirt, a lot of noise dancing around in the reds, uh, so it is a bit distracting. Now on the Sony, what's interesting is we have almost no more noise than at 3200, but we did get some detail loss, meaning that the Sony is just doing a lot more noise reduction, but I would use the Sony here at 6400. And finally, at 12,800, we do get a little bit more noise on the Canon, but not that much more than 6400, which is interesting. Uh, we're just starting to get more detail loss. On the Sony, I'm starting to see more noise uh, and a lot less detail and more artifacting from the noise reduction. So at this point, I wouldn't use either the Canon because it has a lot of noise and the Sony because it has too much noise reduction, losing detail and having artifacting, especially on the hairline. Jumping into 4K at 1600, the Sony is ridiculously clean on my 5K monitor. Not a single grain of noise and very sharp and detailed. Whereas the Canon, we do see noise mainly in the red channels, but it still looks good. Now at 3200, the Sony has barely even changed, only in the darkest of reds. I'm starting to see a tiny bit of noise on my 5K display. Uh, the Canon, now I'm seeing a good amount of noise in Vadim's face, on his shirt, and especially kind of those deep reds. But this is still an impressive improvement over the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R. Now at 6400, we did get some saturation kind of color shift here with both cameras. The Canon has a too much noise now. It's definitely noticeable and I would not use it at 6400 where the Sony is still really clean. I'm just starting to see some noise in the shirt and a little bit of noise uh, on his face. But because the Sony is oversampling from 6K down to 4K, that compresses the noise. So the grain is much more fine and less noticeable. 
And finally, at 12,800 ISO, uh, we're seeing more noise with the Canon and a good amount of detail loss, where uh, the Sony, we are getting more noise in the shirt as well. Uh, but if you're delivering to the web or delivering to 1080p, that would kind of compress down more so. So I'd say the Sony is still usable, but the Canon isn't. And overall, the Sony is more than two stops cleaner than the Canon if you're shooting 4K. Here we're comparing 12,800 on Sony and 3,200 on the Canon. Now let's quickly touch on battery life, and the Canon EOS RP did surprise me. It gets around an hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes shooting 4K, and that was better than I thought it would get. Now the Sony a6400 gets a little bit better, maybe around an hour and a half, but they're fairly close. Both these cameras have their own little differences and quirks. For example, the Canon EOS RP, if you're shooting in 1080p, you can't shoot at 24 frames per second, which is really weird because even my cell phone can do that. You're stuck at 30 or 60, but in 4K, you can only shoot in 24 frames per second. So hopefully they fix that in the 1080p option because to me, this is more of a 1080p camera. Um, but as far as the 4K, that makes a little bit more sense because of all the rolling shutter in 4K without oversampling like the Sony does, I think they just can't unprocess enough frames to do 30 frames per second. I do want to say after spending this day playing with the camera, testing stuff out, shooting with it, looking at the footage, I am pretty impressed with the EOS RP and it is better than I thought. Of course some of the limitations really do suck and we don't have any log formats, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. You could still get good usable results and be a little bit careful where you shoot. For example, that opening clip, that was horrendous dynamic range. <laughs> I thought I could pull it off, I underexposed a bit too much and uh, yeah the skin tones don't look that great so it's better just to turn a little bit and not risk it these aren't crazy rock hammers or anything like that but I think the biggest downside with the Canon EOS RP is the fact that in 4k you don't have that dual pixel autofocus that Canon is known for a lot of the other things people can work around people can deal with but not being able to shoot in 4k with good autofocus is gonna turn a lot of people off and it's gonna make a lot of people upset when they buy the camera they don't know this and then they're gonna suffer with all that focus hunting and even regular shots when we were setting up when we we're shooting 4k it just starts hunting out of nowhere it's definitely not usable uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below which of these two cameras do you think is better for filmmakers and let me know why i definitely want to hear your guys's opinions i'm gonna have links in the description to both along with that little adapter for the a6400 so thank you guys for watching if you want to see more info on the eos rp i will be shooting with it more and making more videos so make sure you guys subscribe and have those notifications enabled and then for the a6400 i have a full detailed review lots of great info that you guys can go and check out i will leave a little uh, card little icon thing right here that you guys can press and you guys can watch that this has been max and i will see you guys in the next video